Hello. My name is Charlie, and I'm here to tell you about the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte. While in Egypt, Bonaparte stayed informed of European affairs through a regular delivery of newspapers and dispatches. He learned France had suffered a series of defeats in the War of the Second Coalition. On August 24, 1799, he took advantage of the temporary departure of British ships from French coastal ports and set sail for France, despite the fact he had received no explicit orders from Paris. The army was left in the charge of Jean-Baptiste Calbier unknown to Bonaparte. The Directory had sent him orders to return to ward off possible invasions of French soil, but poor lines of communication meant the messages had failed to reach him. By the time he reached Paris in October France's situation had been improved by a series of victories. The Republic was bankrupt, however, and the ineffective Directory was unpopular with the French population. The Directory discussed Bonaparte's desertion, but was too weak to punish him. Bonaparte was approached by one of the directors, Emmanuel Joseph Says, for his support in a coup to overthrow the constitutional government. The leaders of the plot included his brother Lucien. The Speaker of the Council of 500, Roger Ducos. Another director, Joseph Fouch. And Talleyrand. On November 9, 18 Brumaire by the French Republican calendar Bonaparte was charged with the safety of the legislative councils, who were persuaded to remove to the CHTEAU de Saint-Cloud, to the west of Paris, after a rumor of a Jacobin rebellion was spread by the plotters. By the following day, the deputies had realized they faced an attempted coup. Faced with their remonstrations, Bonaparte led troops to seize control and disperse them, which left a rump legislature to name Bonaparte, Says, and Ducos's provisional consuls to administer the government. Though Says expected to dominate the new regime, he was outmaneuvered by Bonaparte, who drafted the constitution of the year Vin secured his own election as first consul, and he took up residence at the Tuileries. This made Bonaparte the most powerful person in France in 1800. Bonaparte and his troops crossed the Alps into Italy, where French forces had been almost completely driven out by the Austrians whilst he was in Egypt. The campaign began badly for the French after Bonaparte made strategic errors. One force was left besieged at Genoa but managed to hold out and thereby occupy Austrian resources. This effort, and French General Louis Sakes's timely reinforcements, allowed Bonaparte narrowly to avoid defeat and to triumph over the Austrians in June at the significant Battle of Marengo. Bonaparte's brother Joseph led the peace negotiations in Lundville and reported that Austria, emboldened by British support, would not recognize France's newly gained territory. As negotiations became increasingly fractious, Bonaparte gave orders to his general Moreau to strike Austria once more. Moreau led France to victory at Henlinden. As a result, the Treaty of Lundville was signed in February 1801. The French gains of the Treaty of Campo Fermi were reaffirmed and increased. Napoleon is first consul of the Republic, by Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra. Both France and Britain had become tired of war and signed the Treaty of Amiens in October 1801 and March 1802. This called for the withdrawal of British troops from most colonial territories it had recently occupied. The peace was uneasy and short-lived. Britain did not evacuate Malta as promised and protested against Bonaparte's annexation of Piedmont and his act of mediation, which established a new Swiss confederation, though neither of these territories were covered by the treaty. 
The dispute culminated in a declaration of war by Britain in May 1803, and he reassembled the invasion camp at Boulogne. Bonaparte faced a major setback and eventual defeat in the Haitian Revolution. By the law of May 20, 1802 Bonaparte re-established slavery in France's colonial possessions, where it had been banned following the revolution. Following a slave revolt, he sent an army to reconquer Saint Domingue and establish a base. The force was, however, destroyed by yellow fever and fierce resistance led by Haitian generals to Saint Louverture and Jean Jacques de Salines. Faced by imminent war against Britain and bankruptcy, he recognized French possessions on the mainland of North America would be indefensible and sold them to the United States the Louisiana Purchase for less than 3 cents per acre, 7.4 cents per hectare. Napoleon faced royalist and Jacobin plots as France's ruler, including the Conspiration des Poignards, Dagger Plot, in October 1800 and the plot of the Rue saint Nicaise also known as the Infernal Machine, two months later. In January 1804, his police uncovered an assassination plot against him which involved Moreau and which was ostensibly sponsored by the Bourbon former rulers of France. On the advice of Talleyrand, Napoleon ordered the kidnapping of Louis Antoine, Duke of Enghien, in violation of neighboring Baden's sovereignty. After a secret trial the Duke was executed, even though he had not been involved in the plot. Coronation of Napoleon I and Empress Josephine by Jacques Louis David in 1804 Napoleon used the plot to justify the recreation of a hereditary monarchy in France with himself as emperor, as a Bourbon restoration would be more difficult if the Bonapartist succession was entrenched in the constitution. Napoleon crowned himself Emperor Napoleon I on December 2, 1804 at Notre Dame de Paris and then a crowned Josephine Empress. Ludwig van Beethoven, a longtime admirer, was disappointed at this turn towards imperialism and scratched his dedication to Napoleon from his Third Symphony. The story that Napoleon seized the crown out of the hands of Pope Pius V during the ceremony to avoid his subjugation to the authority of the pontiff is apocryphal. The coronation procedure had been agreed in advance. At Milan Cathedral on May 26, 1805, Napoleon was crowned King of Italy with the Iron Crown of Lombardy. He created 18 marshals of the empire from amongst his top generals, to secure the allegiance of the army. Napoleon at the Battle of Austerlitz, by Franoigrad 1805. The Battle of Austerlitz, also known as the Battle of the Three Emperors, was Napoleon's greatest victory, where the French Empire effectively crushed the Third Coalition. Great Britain broke the Peace of Amiens and declared war on France in May 1803. Napoleon set up a camp at boulogne sur mer to prepare for an invasion of Britain. By 1805, Britain had convinced Austria and Russia to join a third coalition against France Napoleon knew the French fleet could not defeat the Royal Navy in a head-to-head -head battle and planned to lure it away from the English Channel. The French Navy would escape from the British blockades of Toulon and Brest and threaten to attack the West Indies, thus drawing off the British defence of the Western approaches in the hope a Franco-Spanish fleet could take control of the channel long enough for French armies to cross from Boulogne and invade England. However, after defeat at the naval battle of Cape Finisterre in July 1805 and Admiral Villeneuve's retreat to Cadiz, invasion was never again a realistic option for Napoleon. 
As the Austrian army marched on Bavaria, he called the invasion of Britain off and ordered the army stationed at Boulogne, his Grand Arme, to march to Germany secretly in a turning movement the Ulm campaign. This encircled the Austrian forces about to attack France and severed their lines of communication. On October 20, 1805, the French captured 30,000 prisoners at Ulm, though the next day Britain's victory at the Battle of Trafalgar meant the Royal Navy gained control of the seas. Six weeks later, on the first anniversary of his coronation, Napoleon defeated Austria and Russia at Austerlitz. This ended the Third Coalition, and he commissioned the Arc de Triomphe to commemorate the victory. Austria had to concede territory. The Peace of Pressburg led to the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire and creation of the Confederation of the Rhine with Napoleon named as its protector. Napoleon would go on to say, the Battle of Austerlitz is the finest of all I have fought. Frank Macklin suggests Napoleon was so successful at Austerlitz he lost touch with reality, and what used to be French foreign policy became a personal Napoleonic one. Vincent Cronin disagrees, stating Napoleon was not overly ambitious for himself, that he embodied the ambitions of 30 million Frenchmen. <laughs>